When you type a web address into a web browser like www.yahoo.com, your computer needs to turn that into an IP address so that it can contact that web server and deliver the web page to you. This is called a forward lookup because we're turning a host name into an IP address. There's also a reverse lookup that does the opposite. It takes an IP address and turns it back into a host name. We'll cover that in a different video. I'm going to show you in this video the steps that the domain name system goes through in order to do a forward lookup for you. It all starts with your computer. Your computer is a DNS client. A DNS client is one that issues a request to do a forward lookup, and a DNS server is one that answers that request in the form of a response. In order to do any kind of DNS lookup, your client computer needs to contact a DNS server. And usually the one it contacts is one that's fairly nearby, like one that's supplied by your internet service provider, or maybe it's on your local area network in your router, or um, in the IT department at your business. The client computer that's issuing a DNS request needs to know what DNS server to contact to act on its behalf in order to fulfill that request. So somewhere on that computer is a configuration that, that just consists of an IP address that tells it what DNS server to contact. And it might have obtained this IP address from uh, the router when it booted up, or someone might have manually entered it into the DNS configuration control panel. Let's say that the IP address in this configuration is 10.5.1.8, which is the IP address of a DNS server for the internet service provider. So your ISP has a DNS server, which is going to act on your behalf to do DNS lookups for you. This is called a recursive query. You're going to issue a, re a request to the ISP. The ISP is going to, in turn, reissue that request to other DNS servers in order to get the answer for you. So your client computer starts out by issuing a request to the ISP, and it asks a simple question. What is the address for www.yahoo.com? If this is the first time this DNS server has seen this request, it's not going to know the answer, so it needs to ask someone else. And that someone else is going to be a DNS server for the top level root zone. Let's say its IP address is 198.41. .0.4, which is an actual IP address of one of the root DNS servers. Your ISP is now going to forward your request to this DNS server, and it's going to ask the same question. What is the address for www.yahoo.com? And most likely, this name server is not going to know the answer. It's not responsible for knowing the answer to any query that's outside of its zone. It's going to come back with a response that says, I don't know the answer. Why don't you go ask the name server for the com domain. It's going to start from the right hand side and since this is the root name server it's going to add on one little piece and that's going to be the next DNS server to ask. So it comes back and it says go ask the com domain name server. It is c.gtld-servers.net whose address is 192.26.92.30. The ISP's name server is going to take that response and reissue it to the COM DNS server. So it asks the same question again. What is the address for www.yahoo.com? And once you know it, this DNS server is going to come back and say, I don't know the answer either. Why don't you go ask the yahoo.com name server? The yahoo.com name server is ns1.yahoo.com and its address is 68.180.131.16. So once again, your ISP reissues the request again, this time to the yahoo.com name server. So it asks the same question again. What is the address for www.yahoo.com? And this time, the DNS server has an answer. It says the address is 72.30.2.43. Now your ISP has the answer, and it can return that response back to you. And your computer is now able to contact the www.yahoo.com web server in order to deliver a web page to you. Now your ISP's DNS server 
having seen the answer to the response, is going to do one more thing for you. It's going to keep track of that answer. So it's going to put down in a cache the answer to the question, what is the address for www.yahoo.com? Now, the next time a client asks that same question, your ISP's DNS server just has to look in its cache, find the answer, and return it straight back to the client. This will save some steps in the future because it doesn't have to go back and ask over and over again all these other DNS servers, and it takes some of the load off of them. So the caching is a really important part of DNS. It, it, it both solves a problem in that it reduces the traffic on the net, but it can also cause some problems because if this address ever changes, your ISP's DNS server is going to need to know to, to flush that answer out. And we're going to see in a future video exactly how that happens. So as you can see, the steps needed to do a forward lookup of a host name into an IP address is rather complicated. Your client asks a question, your ISP in the form of a recursive query goes and it asks that question again to a whole bunch of DNS servers until it finally gets the answer and then it gives that answer back to you. This all happens in a fraction of a second. It's really quite amazing that it all works so well. And really, this is why I want to put this series of videos together because I want you to understand how this works so that you are in a position to be able to not only configure your own DNS server, but to debug problems when they happen.